You're listening to the ESO Network, your station for all things geek. Okay, auditions for the new Earth Station Who co-host. Take one, go ahead. Hello, Stonehenge, who takes the Pandora Cup, takes the universe, but, bad news everyone, cause guess who, ha, huh? listen, you lot you're always in about, it's really very distracting, could you all just stay still a minute because I am talking. Not too shabby, can you close this up? Earth Station Who, a fun mashup celebrating over 50 years of the Doctor Who universe. You never know where the TARDIS is going to go next. Earth Station Who podcast can be found at www.earthstationwho.com. Earth Station Who is a proud member of the ESO network. We are up on Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher Radio or wherever fine podcasts are found. Peace and we are done. Did I pass the audition? We'll get back to you. Next. Hello, and welcome again to the Monster Sci-Fi Show Podcast. I am your host, The Monster, back to give you a portable, on-the-go podcast in which I'm going to be talking about Star Wars Celebration 2019. So, no, I did not go to Chicago. I had the next best thing, and that is watching everything on the internet for the past week and I'm kind of brain dead at the moment but before I get into that um, I do have a a very big announcement I'm going to be taking another break from doing podcasting and I'm thinking about a month if not maybe two months maybe longer I'm not sure yet reason why is because I got a promotion. So if you've listened to me before, or if you haven't, I'm a librarian during the day and a podcaster at night, so to speak. Um, So I got promoted from an L1 position, uh, which is the lowest librarian or the entry level librarian, to an L2 position, so one level higher. And I'm going to be transitioning to this new position in the next couple of weeks. And as such, I'm moving to a brand new branch, so to speak, because it was being renovated. So the day that I am supposed to report there is the day that that renovation is supposed to be done. So I have a lot of things to work when I get there. And if not, I have to start working on it now, preparing for the summer reading program and just getting myself acclimated to more responsibilities and more things to do. I'm I'm lacking a better word or phrase to say other than more things to do. So as such, I'm not going to be able to have enough time with all everything that's going on to do a normal podcast plus in the process I'm, I'm trying to do like a six week training for other librarians to learn how to do podcasting so it's, it's a lot on my plate and mixed with you know the day to day stuff plus my daughter's graduating from high school in a couple of months it's a lot of stuff going on, and I don't know if I can have the the time to really devote to doing a podcast on a weekly basis. So my short-term goal is that, aside from the Star Wars celebration, which I'll be talking about soon, I will be having a good discussion, hopefully, with Tony and Mr. Gene about Star Trek Discovery Season 2, which just wrapped up. And I think the last podcast will be, again, just for temporary, is going to be the Avengers Endgame review. Hopefully Mr. G and I will talk about that. If not, 
I will talk about that as well. But after that, that's when the break's going to happen. So again, my apologies, but life got in the way, and it got in the way in a, in a good thing. So I'm, I'm really eager to move forward with my career, but I'm more uh, excited and nervous about things I'm going to be doing, or I'm not sure what I'll be doing, but I'll be doing it nonetheless because I'll be in charge of it, and uh, we'll go forward from there, and I'll be fine. And you'll hear me talk about my experiences as a podcaster, as a librarian, and all that fun stuff in the, in the near future. So, let's put all that crap aside. So, normally I would try to do, like, the big three topics and try to devote at least ten minutes. I'm driving, and I'm trying to do this on a Sunday while my kids are with my mom. So, I... Today being Easter... Unfortunately, oh, five below will be open. No, it's not. Well, is Tate's open? Yeah. All right, so I went to Tate's. So, like, <laughs> most trips that Mr. Gene and I go, it's just to go up there, just have a goof on whatever it is we want to talk about, look at some stuff. Maybe we might buy stuff, and majority, we don't. Yeah, like today... I didn't buy anything. Although, there's a Daredevil from Netflix that I'm like, hmm, I could buy that. And then I look at Amazon, I'm like, it's only a $5 difference. <sighs> I didn't buy it, but it's on my list. But there was a cool Star Wars backpack that I really wanted to get, and it's like $80. And I'm like, I'll get there. Just not yet, but it's so freaking nice. It's a, a nice, good, big backpack. So, again, it's on the horizon. So, the big three that normally that I would talk about, or at least the topics, in this case, for Star Wars specific, is going to be talking about the Disney Plus streaming service. And the next topic will be talking about the new Star Wars series called The Mandalorian. And I was so impressed by what I saw. And last but least, I'm going to revisit the Star Wars Episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker trailer. So, um, before we do that, a couple of quick tidbits. One of the things that I've been loving is the new information about Galaxy's Edge which is going to be the new lands at Disney. So we're not going to necessarily see this happen until the fall and then later on this year for the two rides to go into full mode. But the actual land itself, this is probably the best example or best time to get the best information about what they're going to be doing, and I'm just like drooling all over myself. I want to go. I will have to buy a Disney Pass, but I'm not buying this right now. Maybe for Christmas, I'll get the Disney Pass for all of us, and then we'll go forward from there. But until such time, there's no rush. I'd rather get all the kinks out. Um, but one of the cool things about Galaxy's Edge, which is taking place in the Black Spire, is going to be the interactivity. Um, like the Todarian, the Todarian uh, toy market store is going to be having these different characters that I've been wanting to have. And one of them is like a Salacious Crumb character from Return of the Jedi. I, what I love about this is that it's fully articulated and animatronic, I think, to some degree. Um, and it can sit on your shoulder. So, the person who was a Disney rep had one on his shoulder. I'm like, I gotta have one. I really do need to have one. And there's only two variations. There's the original one, kind of like the brown tan color. And then, I guess it's a cousin version, but it's like bluish. A look weird with the coloring, but in any case, I really want one. 
Um, of course, the other cool thing would be the customization of the lightsabers. Not only do you get the hilt, but you also add the different um, colored sabers. Of course, you know it's plastic, but it looks, looks to be a little bit more durable. You can add kyber crystals to add even more, not necessarily personality, but more things you can do with it or more things you learn about it. Um, even the, um, there's this thing on droids that you can build your own droids. So it's kind of like a, a build a bear, but for droids. And you can customize this. And I'm just like, oh my God. I'm just like in love with all this stuff. Now, I will take to task this one comment that really like, uh, no, that's PS. That never happened. Um, but I know why they need to do this. So like with Build-A-Bear, you know, one of the things is going to be the accessories. You have clothing and all this like backpack and all such. So the droid is going to be, you know, not huge and it's definitely not small, but it's enough that if you put it in the backpack, then sure, we need to have it in a backpack. But this person who, again, a Disney rep saying, well, just like Anakin was taking his droid in his backpack, I'm like, what? That never happened. Look, I know you want to push the whole merchandise and get the whole backpack and all that because of the logo. I get that. You don't have to make up a story, especially when you're making a claim that Anakin had a backpack to keep his droid in. We all know he made C-3PO. And then left his ass behind when, you know, he was off with Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan in, from The Phantom Menace. So, don't do that. You don't want the, the anger of fans any more than you have right now with The Last Jedi. I'm just saying. You have our money. Don't go any further. Um... The other thing is just the amount of entertainment, the amount of food. Oh my God, it's just mind-boggling. And the fact that you're going to be able to ride in the Millennium Falcon as well as have a real-life model on the outside and other Star Wars ships with the rise of the Rebellion uh, exhibit stuff. I mean, I, I just cannot believe that this is going to happen that soon. And I will be able to enjoy myself and indulge myself in a fantasy that I've been living since I was 10. And that was, you know, 40 plus years ago in a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> but when I see this and, and I'm, I'm drooling and I'm like... I'm happy as can be. And even though, you know, Gene and I did the review of Star Wars uh, Episode Nine trailer, we're kind of disheartened. But I think because after the, the, the ninth movie, we'll take a break, there's going to be a lull of stuff for the big screen. So the parks, I think, is going to help kind of I guess reconnect, in my opinion, the fans to Star Wars. And whatever Star Wars adventures you want to have, you get to do that. And you get to navigate your own story. Because you can, on top of all that, interact like in the Pirates of the Caribbean where you have like the treasure map and you can find different things. And, you know, basically it's like a scavenger hunt. But with uh, the one for Star Wars, there's a kind of variation that of that, but you get to use your actual phone and app uh, and get to unlock things, do things as a group, whether you're on the dark side, you know, or with Rebellion, whatever it is. And I'm like, oh my God, that's just really cool. I don't want to curse. But it's really, really cool. And I think that's the heart of what Star Wars needs to be is that you can be part of this universe. You can choose however way you want your Star Wars to be, rather than being told that, like, this movie is what Star Wars is, and you all have to follow accordingly. Just like 
when I was a boy and had my Star Wars figures and they all interacted and played in my head and physically um, in, you know, the way that I did as a 10 year old is not going to be the exact same way as someone else's adventure so it, it helped me feel like it was making me feel reconnected back to Star Wars and I'm kind of happy for that even though we're in this weird stage um, for fandom across the board whether it's Star Trek or Star Wars sci-fi in general I mean it's a weird thing because of the toxicity of some people that have towards many different franchises so but watching all this information really made me feel like to be happy you know to spark joy so to speak and get more crap in my house uh, the other thing that I uh, was listening to uh, Anthony Daniels not that I'm going to be dying to know what he has in his memoirs playing C-3PO but he will be having a book uh, based on his Star Wars experience and um, Timothy Zahn is going to be producing more books. Um, I didn't get a chance to read it all because I'm doing this right now in a car and I should not be reading while I'm driving, although I am doing a podcast while driving. Um, but he will be producing more books. So, you know, after Return of the Jedi, there was a good period in which there was nothing 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 about the prequels nothing about the future of Star Wars other than you had the original trilogy episodes 4, 5, and 6 and after that that market kind of dried up Star Trek was the one that was dominating in books and other merchandise that was hitting high Um, and then Zahn really I think to his credit reignited this continuation of that series and unfortunately like the extended universe that Disney ultimately kind of nicks to a degree but one of the one of my favorite characters is uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn who wound up being on was it Rebels? Yes, Rebels um, was happy to be there I'm ecstatic that that happened he's a very cool character so, I haven't read any other Zon books, and I still haven't finished his original trilogy, but the fact that we're still getting this, you know, again, goes back to having those adventures, whether it's in book or comics or with action figures or being with family and friends and doing this all together. There is um, this push to kind of get back to the basics of Star Wars, and I think that should help heal a lot of things, including my own, uh, you know, negative point of view on things, about how things have shaped over the years, so, alright, so let's move on to the Disney Plus, that was the big story here, when it was announced that They're going to do their own streaming service. You know, we have Netflix, we have Amazon, there's Hulu, uh, Apple TV is now in the mix. So it's going to be a tough fight. But from what Disney did, they uh, unsheathed their power upon the land. And it was a mightily loud thunk on the world when they uh, said our price point is going to be $6.99 per month or $69.99 per year stocks for Netflix went down (laughs) or the stocks for Disney went up I think that is a very attractive price point much cheaper than Netflix. Right now, I dropped 
Amazon, although I need to get back onto Amazon for Good Omens and the, the Tick and another TV series coming up. And finish out The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel as well. Um, but yeah, that's a good price point. $6.99 I can go with, or at least the $69.99 for the year sounds even better because I can... Uh, even cheaper so but what sells it even more is the amount of shows that they're already going to have so for marvel side there's the wanda and vision show there's the loki series there's hawkeye there's um falcon and winter soldier as well as an animated What If series. And if you don't know what What If is, basically, it's a comic series, which I also love and grew up with. Um, basically, you have a certain point in the history of comics, or of a certain storyline, and then things change. As in, What If, and then you tell a different story. So, the first story has to deal with Peggy Carter. So, what if Peggy Carter became a, uh, Captain America? That. Just the what if series alone and the fact that you put in Agent Carter as the first story. I'm like, oh my god. You gotta be kidding me. I want to see that. An animated? Fine, I'll go with that. But, oh my god. Agent Carter as Captain America. I cannot wait to see that. So that's just on Marvel's side. The other side, of course, when we have Star Wars, the big thing, and this kind of goes right into the, the next topic, is the Mandalorian series. Now, yes, we're going to get another season of Attack of... Not Attack of the Clones, but the Clone Wars. Um, so... I'm not going to get too specific into that, but The Mandalorian, I watched the panel, and I was just so... I was so impressed by what they showed. Now, granted, this is footage that you're not going to be able to see properly because, you know, it's someone's cell phone. But what I saw, oh my God, this is amazing. Absolutely amazing. So... If you don't know The Mandalorian, and if you watch Boba Fett, he is a bounty hunter, and he is known as The Mandalorian, and his race is Mandalorian. That's their planet. But what was cool about this is that the gun that he is walking around with is kind of like a weird little, like a tuning fork almost. It's the exact same weapon that you would see in the Star Wars holiday special, the animated portion in which we do see Boba Fett for the first time. This is before Empire Strikes Back. He is carrying the exact same weapon. And I'm just like, are you shitting me? You're absolutely shitting me. This is amazing. So it goes and it kind of shows a couple of scenes and the tone is perfect. And then later on, because I missed it all together, but someone else recorded more footage, and this is more of an action sequence, and then out of nowhere, IG-88, the droid bounty hunter comes out, and it is amazing. I could not believe that I would ever see IG-88 other than in the comics, and I think even in the, the animated Clone Wars, would I ever see that character in live action, in action like that. And I'm like, you are, oh my God, IG-88. Just that brief second of him firing and head turning, I was just like, oh my God, you got my money. You have got my money. And for the Mandalorian, this takes place between Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens. So you got a long, long history and a lull of information that you can just tap into. And because this is live action, it's 10 
episodes long. It has a budget of about a, like $10 million per episode. Oh my God. It looks so beautiful. It, it looks fantastic. And you have 10 different directors. Taika Waititi is part of this. Uh, Bryce Dallas Howard, Ron Howard's daughter, that will also be a, one of the directors. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think John Favreau also, besides executive producing, but also directing. Um, holy crap. Holy crap. The Mandalorian is completely blowing me away. Even as I'm talking about this and driving, I'm still in in awe with what I just saw. And again, crappy footage and all, I was so impressed. I just could not believe what I saw. Oh my God. It is so damn good. So it goes back to, yeah, Disney streaming service. You are definitely getting my money. You are getting it. I'm paying for this because I want this. And sure, you know, I can share, but you're going to have to be on my really good side for me to share this with you. But wow. God, wow. <laughs> it, it's, it's, it brings back the coolness of what Boba Fett could have been, but kicks it up a notch and makes it even better. So I'm just ecstatic about that. So now... Going into the last one is Star Wars, the, the trailer for Episode 9. And yes, to listen to Mr. Gene and I, we, we watched it, we had a knee jerk reaction. My feelings have changed, not necessarily, you know, oh, now I can't wait for this movie. Well, it's going to happen one way or another. I'm just hoping, in my heart of hearts, that this works out for a number of reasons. Us as fans, since The Force Awakens, have been kind of splintered. I don't ever remember, even with The Force, um, not The Force Awakens, The Phantom Menace being um, that dis- divisive against a movie. But in fairness, Jar Jar Banks was, you know, not the comic relief that he should have been. Um, but, you know, Ahmed Bess got such crap portraying that character. And it felt bad when I found out that, you know, at one point he contemplated having suicide because of what all just came about. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. And oh, we got the woman who plays uh, Rose from The Last uh, Jedi also was kicked off uh, because, of, not kicked off, but kicked off a social network because of all the toxicity of the fans that just hated her and the character. It's one thing to hate a character. It's another thing to hate the person playing that character. But it was nice watching the panel that JJ was on with Kathleen Kennedy and the entire cast, and when they and when Stephen Colbert, who was hosting the whole thing, uh, got to her, the audience just was in love with her, and you can see the the tears welling up, and even Ahmed Bez, when he was also at Star Wars Celebration, also got a standing ovation. So. Episode 9 has to do so much to reunite us as fans. And I think, because again, the rise of Skywalker doesn't sound very promising, other than what if the whole idea is you have both in one. And it looks like that's a possibility of a theory, or not a theory because it hasn't been proven, but a hypothesis that there is no more Sith, there's no more Jedi, there is only one. And that, I don't want to say cult, 
but that following will be referred to as Skywalkers. So, could that be the very thing that saves Star Wars? Maybe. The other point I wanted to make, going back to the trailer, and as I mentioned, I've already seen the trailer, but when I watched the Star Wars Celebration and watched the reactions of all the fans watching it for the first time and giving kind of the exact same uh, cheers like when they saw Lando, uh, when Ray did that uh, that initial flip over the, the TIE fighter. Those are the kind of things that I'm like, it, it made me feel like there's hope. There is actual hope that we can be unified by this new Star Wars movie. It has to. There's too much invested that Disney has with the Disney streaming service, with the stuff that's going on in the parks. The fans have to be in support of this. If they don't grab the fans, everything that Disney has been doing is for nothing. So it's a big deal, a bigger deal than I think many people realize. Sure, it's made its money, you know, since the time it purchased the the actual uh, rights from George Lucas, but it's still not enough to just ride the coattails since we're not going to get any new movies, no Obi-Wan movie, no Boba Fett movie, none. No spin-offs. You know, Ryan Johnson, eh, we can hold off on your, your trilogy. But man, there there has to be this period that, you know, uh, this, this period of, you know, the dark times. I mean, crap, if it was before the Empire, this is a dark period in, in Star Wars history. I want to believe that, you know, this one movie can bring back what it's like and what it it should represent the best in Star Wars. And hopefully that's going to bring us back together as fans and not to have this one-sided camp of those who love Star Wars those who hate Star Wars. I want to be that 10-year-old kid and be in love with Star Wars again and and remember the good times and the the fantasy of, you know, of playing and enjoying a universe. That's what this is all about. Sure, I love the merchandise because it allows me to continue playing further. But it's just weird that we've gotten to this point that it all may come down crashing. So JJ has a lot to worry about and a lot to, to get right. Um, even at, uh, I think at one point he had gone to George Lucas to help get this back on track, so to speak. You know, I remember when Star Wars first came out that this was going to be initially nine movies and that if they were going to stick to uh, every three years, I was going to see Star Wars, you know, episode nine when I was about 32. Now (laughs) I'm going to be uh, 52 in August. So, you know, 20 years later, But nonetheless, to see, you know, this all come to a hilt. Okay, let's do this. Let's end this destructive order and bring balance to the galaxy, so to speak. I want to have those moments again that I was just like, I can't believe I'm sitting in a theater and I'm going to see a new Star Wars movie. And to quote the line, the very last line in Fat Boys 
We're going to watch The Phantom Menace for the first time. What if it sucks? <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we shall see. I pray that it won't suck. But suck in a bad way, like, oh my god, Jar Jar. And that's the significance. Not screw this because she's a woman, screw that because he's Asian. No, I don't want that. The story didn't work, the story didn't work. The character didn't work, the character didn't work. But let's not blame the actors. Let's not blame the people that try to put this together anymore. If this doesn't work out, we will always have our Star Wars movies. We will always have our toys. We will always have many different options to relive Star Wars over and over again. So, we'll just leave it at that. So, all right. So, I'm done for this podcast. And sorry if it's going to be uh, uh, not as uh, more detailed. But I just wanted to get this out there because, again, next couple of days, next couple of weeks, I'm going to be so swamped with things to do. And uh, I'll be putting the podcast stuff on hold for a bit. So, uh, in the meantime, let me know what you think. What are your thoughts, your feelings about what's going to happen with Star Wars? Any com- possible theories? Or, again, I hate when people say theories because it's not proven. It's hypothesis about what will happen. Although, I will say this. Um, oh, my God. I'm blanking out on his name again. The guy who plays Finn. And I'm sure you guys are, are yelling at me. It's like, oh, it's that guy. Well, I still don't know. <laughs> anyway, so they asked about uh, if Captain Phasma's coming about. I'm like, no, she's done. No, she's done. No, I don't believe Captain Phasma is done. Uh, no, I don't believe she's done. That's just one thing that I would say. I don't think she's done. Oh, see her one last time, <laughs> unfortunately. All right, so. Uh, email me your thoughts, your comments, uh, anything at monstersidequestshow at gmail.com. Follow me on the various social networks. I will still be posting pictures at least on Instagram and doing various things on Twitter. At least that. Socially, I'll be on there at least. So, um, so again, thank you for listening to me and to the Monster Sci-Fi Show podcast. It's sci-fi from a certain point of view. Good night. This has been a broadcast of the ESO Network. Be part of the crew and help support our shows by donating to our ESO Patreon or by shopping through Amazon.com or the Tee Public Store, which can all be found at www.esonetwork.com. The ESO Network, your station for all things geek.